In today's video, I'm going to show you how I set up a Fluval 13.5 all-in-one aquarium uh, geared towards keeping a mantis shrimp. In this tank, I tried to do a little PVC hideaway for him so that I would be able to see him even when he wants to hide from me. I started by taking a pipe elbow and measuring uh, the length of pipe I would need so I could give him a nice cave to hide in and then cut that pipe to length using a sawzall. You're going to want to trim the edge of the pipe as well so that uh, it's, it creates a larger opening at the end. And then make sure to remove any burrs. I started by shaping it with a knife to remove all the large ones and then hitting it with some sandpaper to soften and smooth all the edges. After you've removed all the burrs, you're going to want to give it a quick rinse with water just to make sure you get all the little particles off. And then dry fit that and adjust to make another cut if you need to. You can kind of get the idea that uh, I want the sand to be highest in the back portion of the tank and shallowest in the front portion. This is the substrate I chose to use, Carbacy. And always make sure when you're buying live sand that it's still within its good date. As you pour this stuff out, a lot of it's going to stick to the inside of the bag. I recommend you rinse out the bag a couple times. There's usually at least a good three, four tablespoons worth of media that gets stuck down in there. And keep an eye out. I wasn't aware of it at first, but uh, this package actually contained a package of water clarifier. I almost didn't notice that. So once you get all your media in there, start spreading it out. Try to get an idea of uh, how high the slope will be. If you're going to add any rock like I did, you can adjust your media for that. And then pull the media out of the way where you're going to place your pipe and test fit it. The whole idea is that uh, the mana shrimp is going to use this as his cave so you'll be able to have more viewing time with him. Currently I've only had mine for about three days. The tank's been up and running for four weeks and I have not seen him since I put him in the tank. So hopefully as he gets more comfortable, I've heard other people say that every time you add food to the tank, they'll come out running and looking for you. So hopefully I'll be able to update you guys. And you can see here, I thought that that pipe was sticking up too high. It just wasn't going to work. So I cut it more flush. I recommend you do the same. I chose 2-inch PVC for mine because I was researching how large mana shrimps get. And I wanted to make sure it would be able to turn around with inside the cave. But seeing as how small the one I got is, uh, I would probably recommend going down to a smaller size so that they feel more comfortable. And again, remove all your large burrs with a knife and follow up with some sandpaper. Once you've smoothed all the edges, rinse it off again. And now you can add it back to the tank. And you can see how it's going to have a much more flush uh, setting there with the rest of the substrate.
And again, we're going to want most of the media in the back so that uh, whenever you add food to the front of the tank, he's going to have a bird's eye view of it. The next step we're going to get into here, for my tank at least, was adding the live rock. And uh, I was a little sketchy about the live rock because I've heard about all the different things that it could be in there. And I was like, oh no, it might pinch me or something. But uh, there ended up being nothing at all inside my live rock. After four weeks, I didn't see anything come out of it. And when I went back again and looked at their new shipment of live rock, uh, the employee told me that they're actually allowed to go through and pick out whatever invertebrates and whatnot that they can find in there, and they can have them for free. So that's cool for them, but it kind of stinks for the customer. We kind of lose out. They had actually picked a bunch of uh, brittle starfishes out and um, sea urchins and whatnot. So then just another reason why it's probably not the best idea to choose live rock. In the future, I probably won't bother with it again. So be very careful when you're placing this in such a small tank because you don't want it to roll over and smack into the glass. So make sure it's firmly seated before you let go of it. And you're going to want to leave just enough room for the mantis shrimp to sneak around all sides of it in case he has to chase any of his prey or just so he can navigate around his tank. And uh, I don't have RO water, so I'm just using dechlorinated tap water. Seems to work fine for my grain spotted puffers, so... This will be my first full marine setup. So to chlorinate that water, get it up to temp, and then start adding your salt. I use Instant Ocean, just because that's what my dad used to use back in the day when he was running his saltwater tank, so I just stuck with what I knew. We'll give it a mix here. And here you can see my green spotted puffers. The tank has a lot of diatoms I'm trying to deal with, but I haven't found a great solution. There's one of my Jack Dempsey's. And there's the breeding uh, koi angelfish with a bunch of their newly hatched fry. And some of their older fry. Those are around four or five weeks old, I believe. This is our refractometer. This is what you use to measure the salinity in salt water. And you can see here, when you're, it has no salt, you'll get a completely blank reading. And as we add our salt water solution and check it, you'll see that a white bar appears. And I'll give you a look at that now. And I'm pretty close there. I ended up adding a little bit more salt, mixing it more, and getting it just right. And then add the salt water to the tank. By the way, I did all this within a few hours before I had to go pick up my wife. So the filming was kind of sketchy. I used a Fritz Turbo Start. The guy at the store who was their salt water expert told me to just use the whole bottle, and I did. I didn't have any problems. I added some red leg and blue leg hermit crabs just to keep the cycle going and... Uh, Eventually, you know, they'll become food for the mantis shrimp. So I put those in and let them acclimate for a while. I like to let them soak to temperature acclimate and then use a shot glass of water every 10 minutes or so just to get the water parameters to acclimate as well. Here you can see one of the red lake hermits. And a little blue leg is going to pop out of this. And here's another shot of that hermit crab. But now, four weeks later, I got my mana shrimp. I acclimated him and added him to the tank. And so far, he decided to burrow underneath the rock and make his own cave. So I haven't seen much of him. So 
I, I don't necessarily want to remove the rock and force him to use my cave. I want him to uh, just settle in and let him do whatever he wants till he's comfortable. I'll give him a couple of weeks, see if he starts coming out for uh, feedings and whatnot, and I'll try to get some good footage. So that's how I set up my custom Mana Shrimp tank. Hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe.